Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, September 3rd, and you are here at the weekly community call for chaos. Uh, I'm Elizabeth, nice to see you all here. I'm the community manager here. Um, great to have everybody here. Sean is sharing, so thank you, Sean. I don't know if you meant to do that, but you are. I did, I did, I figured I it's, it. yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's good to give fair warning to the person who's sharing. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You never know. I intended to do that. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's fair. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, you all know, but just in case anyone is new here, um, this is under the Chaos Code of Conduct. So just keep that in mind. If you've not read through that, take a minute and do so. Um, we appreciate you doing that and, and minding your P's and Q's while you're here. We appreciate you. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and start uh, the first item, which is, thank you, Sean, we have a new issue template for adding co uh, community contributions. Um, I, Sean, I was going to do a demo. Do you want to do that? Um, why don't you do it? Because if I do it, then I don't know, maybe I know stuff. Okay. Or wait a minute. Oh, I guess, wait a minute. I'm on the the screen. I see what you're saying. Yes. Um, Either way. So, yeah, yeah. All right. I got it. Um, it's in the community repo, which I think is the same as the, well, it's, I know it's the same as the previous instructions. And there's a file here, which you may be familiar with called community contributions. And at the end of it, there is a, uh, this is, this is a line, right? Yeah. And so if I want to add my contribution, that's not captured otherwise in GitHub, I simply go to create an issue and choose the chaos contribution template and uh, I will put in something like uh, with that I'll call it uh, what do you what do you categorize facilitating meetings as Elizabeth I just put it under community building and management. Thank you. And we hit submit on the issue. TikTok, a little time passes. You can you basically leave it now because in about 30 seconds, your contribution is going to end up recorded in that markdown. If you're really kind of into watching it, you could click the actions tab to watch it execute, though that's hardly necessary. Um, and then once that's done, I go back to the main repository. You can see that community contributions is updated now. And if all the bugs are worked out, I have a correctly entered thing. Yes, look at that. So takes my GitHub ID, my text. Uh, looks like I fat fingered a W on there. And it's, it's all set. And this link takes you back to the issue that was used to open that you opened. Uh, which automatically gets closed uh, by this process. That's it. Hooray. Thank you, Sean. No problem. So, so related to your, uh, your, your extra W there, uh, is anyone, is anyone doing quality control on this? Do we, do we want to go in and that W? Is there a process outline to do that? <laughs> it's probably not. Um, I would imagine that somebody like myself or Elizabeth could periodically clean up any typos like that. Certainly anybody who wants to do a pull request could clean up the typo as well. Yes, both valid. Um, just so people know, this is just for our informational purposes right now. Um, we haven't really decided what we'll do with this information. Uh, formally, um, it's just to right now, just to start to keep track. So this is like a first step in in a, a iterative process that I'm sure will evolve and get better as we go. Um, if you're wondering why we're doing this, uh, these are the reasons here on the agenda. You can see uh, we talked about this in the DEI meeting. This is really what it helps us do um, by keeping track. And again, this is a very very simple and rudimentary uh, way <laughs> to keep track yeah. of. These of these contributions, but it's it's a start. So that's that's where we are. Anybody have questions for Sean or me on this? I think my question is around like 
if we get to some point where the file gets very long, do we do any archiving process? Yeah, um, it will. It will get very long. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it will get long. Like that's that would be the goal, right? Is that we're tracking and and having a lot of these kind of contributions come to the community. So um, we haven't really thought that far ahead, to be perfectly frank. Uh, I think the the idea is that we'll just see how this goes and how we can do this better. And yes, you, to your point, Ruth, absolutely, we'll need to either archive or break it out somehow um, and improve the process. It's a good point. I, I, I did think about it a little bit. Uh, I did think about that problem while I was building out the little action bot. And I, I have some ideas. Uh, things like uh, possibly creating multiple pages of the table and it's just a little different ways of doing the markdown foo that i just haven't dug into yet but if you know the goal is to help people be recognized for things that don't ordinarily get captured but are essential for uh, community functioning and um, so if we made it easy enough that people do it more frequently uh, then we've created the kind of problem that we want to create so that we have to deal with it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and maybe it comes down to just breaking them out into separate files based on contribution. Um, there's there's a lot of options that we have, but this this piece right here with the issue um, really makes it so much easier for folks. Um, that yeah, you're right, Sean. I hope that we do have that problem. Yeah. <laughs> there's just so many we don't know what to do with it all. Exactly. Can we make the drop down list shorter to simplify the following process? Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we just have to come up with a, a sort of, I don't, know who, I don't know who would do it, but we would just need a shorter agreed upon list. I, I did alphabetize the list uh, in this process, so at least you can follow it that way, but it is, it is a pretty long list, there's no doubt. Um, yeah. I, I know I saw you put it in, Sean, you were like, Elizabeth, where should I put it? I thought others will run into that as well. And so if they can find it easier categories might help. Especially now, maybe we can break it out more fine-grained later once we have those problems where we have too much and don't know what to do with the data. That's a really good point on usability, Georg. If, if I have to choose from 20 things, it's more brains than having to choose from six. And in case anyone's wondering what constitutes a contribution, um, Sean, if you go back over to that um, community file right there, yes. So if you scroll up a little, there's a drop down, click for list of types of con contributions, like that list is pretty long. Um, and that comes from our metric that we developed on types of contributions. So um, I don't know, that that is the only Good. thing see as a maybe a breakdown is if people are going straight to the issue they don't really read this bit and they're not sure where it goes so i don't know how to maybe include this bit in in the so issue like, i don't know this is the drop down list elizabeth i just alphabetized it okay gotcha it's so it's the drop down has this exact same list um so yeah we can bucket it for the purposes of that issue templating for sure. And maybe we update this metric to have those buckets as well. So we break this long list out into smaller buckets. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yay, improving our metrics by implementing them. Right. <laughs> that's such a weird concept. I can so, so Ruth, I'm just gonna Oh, go ahead, Sean. Uh, I was just going to answer Ruth's question in, in uh, text chat or meeting chat. It can be shared quite easily with other communities, and I could provide brief instructions on how to do that. What the process was, frankly, a little bit strange, and it seems like there might be some kind of machine learning that's happening in the GitHub action behind the scenes, because I got this all working in a completely separate repository with all the same artifacts. And then when I tried to bring it over to ours, I had some of the same issues I'd had in the original construction. But as I iterated through changes, uh, they just kind of disappeared, sometimes for reasons I couldn't really explain. 
And and so I think it, there doesn't seem to be like this take it and plug it in. Like there seemed I had to do debugging moving it from one repo to another, and I don't believe I should have. So that's the only caveat there. Any other questions, comments, anything on this? Uh, I do. I do have a little concern. Not 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 a whole lot of concern, but I, I do have a little bit of concern uh, about kind of the uh, the way we're collecting the data. So the the data is gonna this data is gonna skew very much towards people who are. Uh, interested in self-promotion. Uh, so very specifically to that first line, like who is this for? People who need to add this type of stuff to their to their resumes. Uh, so so this data is going to skew pretty, it'll, it'll skew very much towards that self-promotion. So rather than capturing kind of contributions for the for the project, it, it really is more capturing this very specific thing, right? Which is fine, and I'm not a. I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just a. Uh, maybe when we uh, when we when we discuss this, the how we're capturing that the the contributions for chaos. Maybe we need to have a disclaimer on that, or you know, these. This isn't capturing all the contributions. There are a large number of people that are probably not included in this list. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. Um, the other, or I should say, another weakness of this data collection, the way it's, it is right now, um, it doesn't accurately depict the amount of time that's taken per contribution, um, which is another thing we talked about in the DEI meeting. It's that, you know, we're kind of putting everything on the same level, but I think Alice had, a, had, a, had one entry for um, organizing the podcasts and that's, that's like so many hours of work and so much goes into that that you know but also for her to individually enter every single thing that she did to in order to do that is also unwieldy and um overwhelming so you're right <laughs> kevin this, um it is it is based on self opting in for sure um and then it also doesn't it, it like puts everything equal so i'm not really sure um, how we address those things. I think making it easier for people to contribute to this doc um, will maybe help the the um, number of people that want to self or to opt into it. Um, but yeah, you're right. It doesn't is definitely not uh, an accurate representation of exactly how many contributions are happening outside of PRs for sure. Just something to consider, not a. Uh, it, it looks great, and I, I definitely think we should do it. Just something to consider with the data, and maybe something to as to, to to what you just said. Maybe maybe this is something we should continue to talk about. Because the 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 item you mentioned about the how much time things take, I mean, that's 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 a big that's a big deal, uh, and it would be great if, if that was incorporated in in some fashion. So ad adding the amount of time would be relatively straightforward technically. Um, we just have to modify the existing table and the existing ones would probably not have estimates, which would be fine, I think. The allowing uh, the other for the self promotion question, I think we could allow people to uh, record credits for others or recognize the contributions of others so that you didn't have to enter it yourself. Uh, but then that would that we would just have to figure out if we want to be sure that we're identifying the correct person. Right now, we do it with the GitHub ID of the person creating the issue, and we would just have to decide to use some other freeform kind of thing, which has strengths and weaknesses. And I know there is some uh, concern around privacy, and some folks really don't want their contributions to be recognized. Right. And so we just, I want to be mindful of that as well. Um, so yes. I think that if we help just in our chaos community culture, if we help normalize adding your contribution, then it will maybe even out a little more and we will get more from from folks who maybe don't know about it right now or might feel a little intimidated, like 
I would love for them to not feel that way, but um, it is a valid thing for sure. Or, you know, maybe with permission to be able to re uh, recognize someone else. Yeah, I think is a really good thing. These are great ideas. And I appreciate the feedback and input on this. So thanks everybody. Uh, anything else we wanna talk about? Okay, cool, well, let's go on. I'm putting this in here on behalf of Dawn who is uh, on holiday right now, enjoying herself, no doubt. I hope she is anyway, <laughs> she's having a great day. <laughs> So uh, she, she's not doing holiday right if she's not enjoying herself. That's it's... right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just another day yeah. in a yeah. different location, right? Um, yeah. So this practitioner guide is the the latest in the line of of several. She's looking for feedback, um, and if uh, if you did not read that little disclaimer she put in, this is not meant to be a super super comprehensive guide of everything there is to know about security and open source. Just a high level for people just getting started. Um, and it does follow the practitioner guide outline and, and format. So if you're wondering why it looks like this, that's because all of our practitioner guides look like that. Um, so yeah, if you have a moment and you would like to give it a read, um, even if you're not sure about the content, if you're not an expert, that's fine. Just, you know, giving it a read for understandability and readability is, is perfectly valid. So feel free, don't, be hesi don't hesitate to, to give it a read. You don't need to be an expert. Um, she's looking for feedback by the end of this week, if possible, so just get that in sooner than later. I think she's planning to publish it probably next week. Questions on this? I probably can't answer them, but <laughs> we can log it. There's a question. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we can go on. Lucy snoring back here in case you're new uh, on the call and have not heard the sound. That's what that is. <laughs> Bless her little heart. Um, okay, <laughs> let's go on. <laughs> Next one, which is the ChaosCon EU 2025. Again, this was a, something else that came up in the DEI working group, um, just kind of came up as a side quest. Uh, this is probably the time to start maybe thinking about planning. Matt's nodding his head yes. Um, sooner than later, at least to get that venue sorted yep. earlier than, than later. So um, I just wanted to bring that up here. Um, I don't think Matt really has an interest in taking that task again. <laughs> if I recall, if that's a, is that a, is that a fair statement? It's fair. <laughs> that, that's I think, not the local, the lo not the local arrangements. I, th I think um, Georg, I don't know if Georg is able to help us uh, facilitate communication with the hotel again. Um, and that what was involved in you had to manage all the budgets and contracts pieces with the venue, right? Yeah, and just just all of the local arrangement stuff like signage and mm -hmm. just making sure that it was available, all, all the food stuff. I had to do all that stuff as well. Um, the social event. Like it, it's just making sure that everything's aligned over the course of that day. Yep. AV stuff, um, snacks. <laughs> yeah. Just, it doesn't sound like much when I just list it like this, but it ends up being- No, a it is a lot. Quick question. Yeah. So th this is around the Linux Foundation European? No, this is, is the Fosdem one. Okay. So is the kind of or is the plan still to have kind of two chaos cons a year, one yeah. co located with Fosdom and one co located with the uh... Yep. Okay. Yeah. And the Fosdom one is great. I mean the the hotel, um, Bedford, I think is what it is. It's wonderful. Yeah. And the, I mean the setting is really nice. The room I think is nice despite that we break like a hundred glasses over the course of a day. <laughs> <laughs> they need bigger tables. I think that's partly on them. And not marble floors. <laughs> yeah. Sort of glasses that don't tip over so easily. Yeah. It's a multifaceted problem. It's a... But just like having the balcony is really nice. Um, 
the breakout rooms are nice. I mean, I'd highly recommend the Bedford again. Yeah, I think it's there. a great location for sure. I also liked the the two days before Fostum. I feel even though it made people kind of come in a little bit earlier, I think just because there's so much going on the day before Fostum. So I think that that time frame worked out well as well. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, I think you're right. I agree with that. So I guess we're looking for uh, volunteers <laughs> that want to that want to do that. And you know, if nobody wants to do it, I will do it. I, I absolutely can, will and can do it. I would not want to deprive someone else of the opportunity to, to, to step in. You can add that to the issue tracker. <laughs> like, <laughs> organize chaos con is <laughs> like one line item. <laughs> oh, I will put no. it in every single task. <laughs> well, and you know, it's like I, I can help. I'm I'm a little bit reticent to take on the whole thing. Uh, Callie's got her hand up. Oh, Callie, yes, step in. Yeah, so I was gonna say I'd be happy to help. This is my first time going to FOSDEM and then helping planning. So I would definitely be happy to help paired on with somebody who has experience with this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, okay, okay. Kevin. Okay. Uh, so in, in the past, we, we usually do, uh, uh, the planning committee usually meets at the end of this meeting. We plan on doing that in the future. Yes. So like, like 15 minutes, the last 15 minutes in this call, we, we do chaos planning committee. Yeah, I think we'd get to that pretty quick here. Okay. So, so we can just, uh, we can just kind of opt in that way, right? If you want to stick around after the community meeting. If you want to stick around for the chaos con planning committee meeting, uh, it's a good way to opt in. Yeah, and, and I was going to say, like when I, I know when I know some of what Matt did was he certainly at the hard part, but just being able to have an institution to sign things um, and sign off. And I think we actually ended up having Baturgia's help to do the contract sign off because it's a lot easier for Baturgia to sign it than it is for a university to get it through. So there are some logistics and I'm happy to help. I'm just reticent to take the whole thing on. Georg, you had your hand up. What Kevin said, the planning committee meetings and dividing up the tasks there. Yeah, we can, we can certainly do that. Um, it did, it did help to have one person as the point person though, I think for the venue, um, cause the venue is not going to want to deal with 47 people. No. And so, um, we will need, you know, certain folks to have certain roles, I think, but, um, but yeah, uh, Callie, you and I could probably do this, at least the bulk of that. So, um, we can, Sounds good. yeah, yeah, we can figure it out. Um, and Matt will just tell us what to do. So it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I can sign things or help with things as, as but, needed. But Tertia could sign again. I mean, that, that, that one, does make it a lot easier. So. Gerard, does that sound reasonable for Baturgia? Was that too much of a pain? We're happy to support that again. Awesome. Yeah, that would be super, super helpful. That helps a ton getting yeah. things through <clears throat> the university. Foundation legal or university legal. <laughs> It's just not awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's an odyssey. Okay, so um, Callie, I'll make sure there is a Slack channel for chaos comp planning. So I'll make sure you're in that. Um, and then, you know, any any time now we can start blocking off a little bit at the end of this meeting um, to talk about stuff. So, okay, thanks everybody. Any other final comments before we move on? Are FOSTEM dates set yet? That's a good question, actually. I don't know. I know when it usually is, but. Uh, we I talked about this with Don and a few other people a week or two ago, and it's always that first weekend in February. We think it always means the first Saturday. It's always been that way. But at as of two weeks ago, they had not formally announced the dates yet. 
So I think we can plan on it being whatever that first Saturday is and two days before that for us, but um, I don't believe that is formally announced yet. So we probably should not sign any contracts until that, until that's oh, said. No. <laughs> but it, it takes a good, it, it's not like contracts like fly out and get signed in a day, right? They, uh, they take surprisingly long. Yeah, that was a great question, Sophia. Okay, well, I guess we can move on. Um, Sean, do you want to talk about the new government Slack channel? Uh, this one's pretty simple. It was a question was asked in the I think the general channel or perhaps random about do we have a WG government channel? Um, the answer was yes, and it's been we've had it for a little over two years, I guess two and a half years now, but it's just been a private channel that I've been working with some folks in the U.S. government, like Remy De Cosmaker and his team on. Um, so it's been for coordination. So what I did is I renamed that private channel to something else and created a public WG government for public forum discussions. And, and the reason I think it's kind of obvious the reasons why I didn't make the private channel public because there's a, a long history of not terribly secret things, but US government folks especially have to be careful never to be seen as lobbying for one firm or another or any enterprise. So like, I don't think there was any of that in there, but to protect the interests of the people who have, uh, we've been working with. I, I just left all that history out because, you know, I don't want somebody to be able to like go through it and say, aha, because you said you liked Amazon for this, you're promoting Amazon, for example. So that exists now. And so if there are government OSPO related questions, uh, it seems there were a few, at least in the general chat, a few interested parties um, that's been created. Right now, there's no formal agenda around it. Awesome. That's it. Okay. Questions for Sean? Nope. All righty. Metric development work. Guessing that was you, Matt? Yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know that Peculiar and Yiga are starting to coordinate work around getting the metrics to the new template. And there does appear to be some kind of like uh, cascading things that, that end up kind of connecting to this work. So um, we had also talked about that second point, which is metrics and metrics models moving into a single meeting and then also moving that into a single repository and then subsequently moving all of the metrics that are currently located, say, in WG value or WG risk, just to the metrics repository. I think there's kind of this whole, it's not huge, but just kind of a cascading set of things to think about. And it does seem that Yig and Peculiar are aware of these things. So um, anyway, it just, I think, kind of organizing that work in a, in a consistent way is just going to be really great. That's it. Um, anyone who wants to um, keep an eye on that work or has, you know, thoughts around it, um, that the conversation has been happening in the metrics development uh, Slack channel. So. And we'll probably end up finding a kind of a new time for the metrics slash metrics model meeting in hopes of accommodating people's different schedules. Was I supposed to do something there? Yeah, you were going to do an emoji vote thing. Yes, I was. <laughs> yes, I was. Okay. Let me just put that in here because I did not do that yet. So I'll just, I guess, do that in both Slack channels and see what we end up with. Yeah. And then I'm guessing we could also then just merge our Slack channels to like metrics and models or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Um, I, mm, I guess my question is about that. Do we do we need to give it one more week in case folks were not at 
this past week meetings. Yeah, we could give it one more like okay. cycle. Yeah. yeah, just to make sure you know we have a little bit more foundation of people who know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just thinking about Don and other folks who are on vacation right now who yeah. are back and then it's like oh. And okay. then all of a sudden it's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's let yeah. Um, Okay, I would feel better about that for sure. Okay, and also I would not feel as bad as I do right now for not having done it. So done it was. It. The, I think this that was like the meeting was on Thursday, and then it's Friday, and then it's a three day weekend. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. I do feel and better. It's Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it's this with the end of the week. All of a sudden, sort of. <laughs> No, it's September right now. How how is that even? I don't even. I'm in July still. I'm still in July. I don't know, man. Okay, that sounds good. Other questions, comments, anything on that work? Nope. All right. Well, we have 15 minutes left. I'm going to go through the reminders really quick. If you have something else you want to talk about, you do have time to put that on the agenda while I'm going through the reminders. So keep that in mind. Um, podcast ideas, we do have an email address and I have seen a few come through. So thank you to those who are sending actual ideas through that to that um, to that email address. We appreciate you. Uh, we do have a submission form that you can access through Slack if you want us to help you talk about something. Uh, either on our social media, in the weekly newsletter, whatever that looks like. You can also nominate someone for Chaotic of the Week. If there's somebody that you would like to highlight their contributions or um, just recognize in some way, you can absolutely nominate them. And that can be anybody. You can, you, you can just nominate anybody. You can nominate yourself if you want. That's cool. We don't mind. We do have um, the education repo, just a reminder, if you have done a talk about chaos and you have some slides that you would like to add, you can add them here. There's also a calendar of upcoming talks that we can add your talk to if you've not given it yet. And that you would do that through this uh, comms team form. And then finally, chaos code of conduct. Um, there are a couple of documents that are in uh, need of review and feedback from the community. So if you've not had a chance to take a look at those, please do so. Um, oh, here we go. Code of Conduct, Conduct Committee updates. There we go, timely. Yeah, I can briefly share on Friday at our uh, bi-weekly meeting, we role played the procedure and taking a report and having documentation uh, templates. So we are coming to the end of creating the process and we would like to move into publishing. So finalizing that this week, you would say, is that fair or by next week? We meet again in two, uh, next week. And so I think sometime end of September, beginning of October, we would like to um, have the pull request merged to update the code of conduct and uh, the procedures themselves, we would like as pages on the website. So from the code of conduct page that is linked in the menu, you can click through to these specific procedures. And so that's how you would find them through the code of conduct. And then we'll have to update all the code of conduct in the repositories. And then we have the new procedures live. Okay, I will um basically then just wait to hear from you all as far as getting it on the website so you tell me when it's ready and we can make that change is that fair okay cool and i think we can um or what i would recommend is we just set up uh those just like the the skeleton or the the shell that we usually use with um pulling the actual content from github 
so that if there are changes, it's all tracked and all that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Any final things before we adjourn? Do we want to start our chaos con meeting soon ish like next week? Sure. Yeah. I was just thinking we could even do it now. We have 10 minutes. Yeah, maybe now. I was just, I think the sooner we could think about the structure, the better. Yeah. yeah. I know there's going to be a lot of travel over the next couple of weeks with OSS EU being active two weeks from today. So we just might have fits and starts here in early September with participation. But yeah, we can go into that now if you want. Cool. Okay, so if you're um, interested in helping plan the next chaos chaos con EU, it will happen in February. Um, stick around. Otherwise, feel free to head out and enjoy the rest of your day. I will we stop the recording. <laughs>